The Awakening presents Going Deeper with Ben Cerullo, a conversation designed to help believers live victoriously through God's Word. Here's our host, Ben Cerullo. Well, hi, and welcome to the broadcast today. We're going deeper. I'm Ben Cerullo, and this is the bishop himself, What's Jacques up, brother? Thomas, the prophet. <laughs> oh, no, now I go from bishop to prophet? Hey, you got, you got a little of everything going on inside. <laughs> I've seen you flow. <laughs> yes, we've had the privilege of traveling around the world, ministering and releasing the kingdom of God together, yes. and today we're going to talk to you guys and... Uh, go a little deeper on the blog this week about the faith to destroy giants Mm -hmm. and diving into the word and because we all face giants there's giants in our land and uh, there was giants in the promised land that's exactly right Uh, that was the land that god promised them but when they got there it was inhabited by giants and uh, when the people when the spies were sent in to spy out the land they said well it's just like god said <laughs> it's giant <laughs> these in the are land. big grapes <laughs> there's some big people eating these grapes grape ape <laughs> and uh yeah but then fear you know fell upon them exactly because right. of the people of the land but that was you know many times we have a promise mm-hmm. but standing between us and the promise is a giant and, yep. and we've got to We've got to not only, we can't go around them, Mm-mm. we got to go through them, and uh, we have to have faith in order to do that. Well, dude, and the one thing that amazed me when I read that story uh, of Joshua Caleb coming back, um, and, and was that in Numbers, um, is the fact that out of the 12, these two stand so firm to know that God will give them the land, and you have 10 that make a decision for a million people. Yeah. <laughs> And, and these 10 people are like, no, we can't do this. And it affects millions of people to keep from their promised land, you know. And you, like you said, we have to face our giants. One thing I love about that passage of Scripture is the fact that if I face my giant, I don't know who else coming behind me. I don't know who else can get that victory. I know I'll get my victory. But there's someone else in my life that's going to share that victory too. And so you have to face the giant. You, whatever that may be in your life, you've got to face that giant. Yeah, we got to go through them, not mm-hmm. around them. And yeah. that's the, you know, we often want to take the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. We want to go around it because it's easier. Because sometimes facing the giant, you know, it's scary. And uh, the only way to get the breakthrough is to go through them. Exactly Otherwise, right. he's going to be taunting us and haunting us. For the rest of our life. That's exactly it. And, there, and the thing that is significant is your promise is on the other side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yours. <laughs> it belongs to you. And because God's promised you, you should take confidence knowing that he is with you in yeah. order to, to face that giant and to be able to, to overcome it. You know, uh, this passage here, this week's blog, you know, we talk about Joshua, mm-hmm. that he, uh, Joshua... Uh, 11 21 and 22 um, where it says Joshua came and cut off Anakim from the mountains Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities none of the Anakim were left in the land of the children of Israel they remained only in Gaza in Goth and in Ashdod and it just uh, he didn't these Anakim they were sons um, of the giants yeah the Bible um You know, one translation may mean they were long-necked men. Mm -hmm. Um, They were dreaded inhabitants of Canaan. These giants, they were descended, uh, the descendants of those who 40 years earlier had brought uh, much terror uh, into the hearts of Israel. And these were the men who were resting in the land that belonged to the children of Israel. And Joshua utterly destroyed them and their cities. Yes. He handled business. (laughs) And that's how you've got to take it when you face these giants. You need to cut them out of the land and destroy everything that goes with them in the spirit um, and be able to take the promise that belongs to you. Yeah. But it takes faith to be able to do that. Come on. And it takes faith to fight that fight. You're going to have to apply faith uh, very strongly in that area because, you know, we were talking earlier about some things, but, you know, I go back to Ephesians uh, f- uh, 6 4, you know, we wrestle not against principalities, but rules in high places. You know, yeah. you got to, f- you, you can't dodge the enemy. You can't just talk around the devil. You got to talk to him. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? You got to talk to your giant. Yeah, you gotta, and you can't talk to God about the enemy, like doing it, <laughs> yeah. sticking it to the enemy for you. <laughs> yeah, no, you got to stick, stick it to him. <laughs> you got to do that. Yeah, the, the sword is in your hand. Yeah. You stick him. <laughs> exactly right. You know, and so you got to talk to your enemy and you got to let him know that you mean business. Yeah. And then he's standing in the way of your promise. That's right. And whatever that promise may be in your life, you got to talk to him and you got to command him. To move, you got to destroy him. Whatever that is in your life, you got to destroy it. That giant has to be destroyed, brought yeah. down low. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all have giants in our mm-hmm. lives. They could be relationship issues. They could be employment issues. Mm-hmm. They could be financial problems. They could be health related. Mm-hmm. They're giants. Yeah. And they there's they're standing in the way of God's promises. Mm-hmm. And so wherever we find those giants, we have to ruthlessly deal with those giants. And I think at King David, when he came and saw Goliath, you know, as a young boy, he was sent on an errand for his yeah, father yeah. and looking for his brothers. And he, he's overhearing this giant down in the valley mm-hmm. talking smack about the children of the living God and speaking, speaking about our God yes. in a way that he was like, well, wait, <laughs> <laughs> not not on my watch. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, David rose up against him because he knew that he had a history with God, number yes. one. He had faith in God that God was able because mm-hmm. God had shown himself faithful with the lion and the bear before yeah. he ever got to Goliath. Yeah. And he, he confronted him. He didn't confront him uh, with his weapons, though he had his, his mm-hmm. slingshot. Mm-hmm. He confronted him. In the name of the Lord of hosts, the Bible says, David said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He was so confident in his God. And when you face your giants, you've got to, if you don't have confidence, don't go fight your giants. Because if anybody else would have tried, they would have died. Yeah. And that's why they were all scared and sitting on the sidelines. Exactly right. You got to get some history with God. You got to spend time in his word. You got to build your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word Mm -hmm. of God. Uh, hearing comes by the word of God. So your faith comes by hearing. Your hearing comes by the word of God. So you've got to be close to God's word. You've got to allow it to penetrate, allow it to rise up so that when you see the giant, then you're like, man, he's not a giant. My God's way exactly bigger right. than him. That's exactly right. And that's the problem is, you know, we see our giants as bigger than our God. No, man. How I, how I see, you know I me, mean, how I see God and how I see my situation is going to determine what God can do for me. Yeah. David saw his God bigger than the giant, and he knew by faith that he could be defeated. Yeah. You know, Joshua and Caleb, they knew that their God was bigger than the giants. Yeah. You know, so they knew that it would be defeated. Joshua knew that gives the Achans and my God is bigger than this. He will defeat them. And so you have to begin to you got to change your mentality. You got to change it. You got to put on the mind of Christ. You know what I mean? Let this mind be within you that was in Christ Jesus. He already saw defeat, defeat, defeat. I win, I win, yeah. I win. I mean, he saw that. He saw victory all the time. He didn't see a place of defeat. He saw when he saw him said, even on the cross, <laughs> he looked down the line and said, I do this for the joy yeah. of them. So you have to change your perspectives when you're facing your giants. You got to be able to beat your giants. Yeah. Well, and it takes that element of faith. Mm-hmm. It it's that bridge i call it to bring you into the supernatural Mm -hmm. realm it takes you from this natural place to that supernatural place and you gotta you gotta trust that god is you know it's hard when you're facing a giant the natural tendency is fear and that's that's the natural tendency but we've got to be able to uh you know faith is the enemy of fear Mm -hmm. fear tolerated is your faith contaminated so we can't allow uh tolerate fear we and we got to combat it with faith believing Mm -hmm. that god is who he says he is that god will do what he says he's going to do um you know it's tough when you're fighting a a medical situation maybe or uh an issue in relationship just to really stand and believe you know by his stripes that Mm -hmm. i am healed and uh, the doctor's telling you one thing the x-ray the mri the cat scan whatever it is you're looking at the evidence of this manifestation but the reality is that by your stripes you are healed. Mm-hmm. And so this natural is trying to conflict with his word. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you've, gotta, you've got to stand 
you got to close these natural eyes and look through the eyes of faith exactly in right. order to see like God sees. God sees that nothing is impossible for him who believes. Mm-hmm. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So when you face that giant, whoever it may be, it may be a, a natural issue going on. Maybe it's on your job. Maybe yeah. it's uh, with a person. Um, you got to stand in faith that God's going to give you favor with not only God but man, like the Scripture says. Exactly that he right. had favor with God and man. That's exactly right. So we got to we got to wait on God's favor to work on man, so that we can get our breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a spiritual deal, we got to confront that thing uh, with the Word of God and with faith, believing, being fully persuaded that the thing that God promised, He's also able to perform. That's exactly right. So you know. It is important for us to stop running from our giant as Saul would run and stop being frozen by them and face your giant. Let, let Begin to put the word into practice. I love what you're saying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more I stay in my word, the more I begin to hear that word. Yeah. My faith has been built up. For what? So I can face my giant. Destroy that which sits, stands in my way. And I think a lot of people need to begin that. The children of God, we need to begin to take that approach. God has already laid out all the promises. It's done. It's complete. It's there. What stands in between you is your, is, is the giant. Yeah. You know, it was like we used to grow up as kids. And we'd great to fight somebody. And we'd say, the only thing that stands between me and you is fear. An atmosphere. That's it. <laughs> Which one you want? You know what I mean? Because you didn't, you weren't afraid. You know? Yeah. So you knew exactly. Hey, we're going to fight. We're yeah. going to fight. We're going to fight, you know, and so you would get closer and closer and closer yeah. and wait for somebody to bump shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was on. And then it was on. Well, it's the same way here. If you're facing your giant, don't stand back from it. Stand up close to it. Yeah. Get Approach it into the spiritual realm. Stand up to your giant. Don't yeah. let him get it, taunt you and, and have you be cowardly, uh, yeah. a child of God. That is yeah. not what God wants. And speak to that giant. Yes. Just like David did. You know, David came and he spoke to him. Mm-hmm. You come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, yes. the yes. God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Mm-hmm. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. <laughs> and he was a gangster. He was. Like, I, I'm playing around with you, you know. And, uh, and God is looking for people who will believe him like that. Yes, yes. And, and Ben, I think we, we have to begin to, to move in that direction. But, you know, I don't mean to get off track, but you're writing a, a book that's just similar to this, like people facing their giants, facing yeah. those things in their lives and begin to call them to move forward. You're, you're putting together a book right now that can help them face the giants. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's called Unchained, you know, mm-hmm. because too many times we, we live under the shackles of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And God's created us to live free from those chains. And we've got to unchain ourselves uh, from from the bondage. Yeah. You know, that whether it's sin in our life, whether it's some kind of battle that we're facing and standing in front of, uh, we've got to walk in the freedom. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to... Uh, Not just know that because, you know, in my own life, I knew that, but I still was chained. We Mm -hmm. know that. We know all the scriptures, but yet our life is still full of of bondage and Mm -hmm. chains. And uh, it's time to cast those things off and and to be free. And so um, we need faith. We need to confront it. We need to speak to those giants in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord of hosts. And we need to take authority um, and we need to move forward. And not allow ourselves to retreat. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need to be um, not just defensive. And that's, you know, half the problem is we're always defending ourselves. And Mm. we need to get to a place to where we're not just defending ourselves, but we're taking the offensive. You can't win a game with just defense. No, you can't. you got to have some offense in the game. And we got to not just wait for the enemy to come to you. You got to go to him Mm -hmm. because he's already got things that belong to you that it's time to go take them back. Yeah. So, um, you know, the giants are there to stand, to taunt, to mock. But at the end of the day, uh, the devil's defeated. Yes, he is. And he's a liar. He's a thief. He's a trespasser. And he's trespassing. So when you see a giant, you've got to realize that that giant is... uh, trespassing on kingdom property that has already been purchased for you through the blood of jesus through the resurrection uh it it is it is yours yes and so 
the, that's sometimes, you know, with the enemy, my grandfather always had this saying, he says, when the devil knows that you know that he knows, and he back and forth, you know that he knows that you know that he knows that we have the power. That's the, when he really realizes that you understand who you really are and what you really have, then he knows he's already lost. Mm-hmm. But he stands up and he mocks and he taunts those who don't know who they are exactly. and don't know what Jesus really fully did, who just have a theory about it but have not experienced that. But once you know, and once he knows that you know, yeah. then it's on. He's exactly right. He's ready to fight then. He's yeah, ready he's, to taunt you or do anything else. He's but. ready. To, he can't. He, that's when he realizes, yeah. man, I got no hope. No hope, no nothing, and I back down. Yeah. <laughs> I back down on this fight. Because you know. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the most, uh, when you know it, the enemy, the bully, yeah. the bully itself won't mess with you no more. That's right. You know what I mean? When you stand up to the bully, the bully stops. You know, we got all these videos flying around about bullying and everything else. And, you know, when the bully figures out he's up against a kid <laughs> that's going to stand back up against him, the bully, yeah, he'll stand out for a little while. But when you fight him back, he stops. Yeah. He's not the bully no more. No. You know, you showed him that, no, you can't run over me. I'm going to take this on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, if you're listening today, you've got giants. We all have giants. Mm-hmm. We've got them in some way, form, or fashion in our lives. And uh, God doesn't want you to back down from the giant. God doesn't want you to go around the giant. God wants you to go straight through him and run him over. You know, in football, keep your legs moving. <laughs> Drive, <laughs> man, push him down. Uh, and, and you know, like David did, not only did he knock him down, you know, the, the rock didn't kill David. The sword of Goliath killed mm-hmm. David. The rock knocked him to the ground, and then David knocked him out. The sword cut his head off, yes. and, it, and it finished the deal. you got to slay the giants, utterly destroy them. You know, like, like uh, Joshua did. He utterly destroyed them out of his land, yes. the land that God gave him. Mm-hmm. God's given you land. That doesn't just necessarily mean a plot of ground. It means your family, your physical body, uh, your financial realm, all these different things. They are yours. God has given them to you. And whatever stands trespassing in those places, those giants, God wants you to confront them, not in your own strength, not by might nor by power, the Bible says, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God wants you to confront them in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of the Lord of hosts, and to speak to them and say, not on my watch. God wants you to press through. God wants you to pursue them. And if they turn and flee, chase after them and utterly destroy them. And uh, it's your inheritance. It, it belongs to you. And so you're not listening by accident. I just want to encourage you that uh, you're not fighting alone, but the Lord your God is with you. Yes. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That the Bible says he is your very present help in times of danger and of trouble. And so to realize that when you call on the name of the Lord, the Lord is with you. Mm-hmm. That, you know, uh, my mom was showing me this. She loves all these little videos on Facebook. And uh, so is this little lion or little uh, bear cub mm-hmm. and a jaguar or some kind of tiger type thing. And um, it was just and it was trying to eat the little bear and it chased it out on a tree and then it broke and fell in the river. It's floating down, and the jaguar's like working the bank, saying, "Dude, your dinner as soon as you get out." And it got out on this thing, and uh, it came down to it. And that little tiny bear cub finally like stood up. And he knew he had to stand up; he was about to get eaten. Yeah. And uh, let out this little scrawny like growl that wasn't really a growl. And then uh, the jaguar like took off the other way and then it panned out to a wide shot and mama bear was standing up behind it and le- like letting out this crazy growl yeah. and you know just that picture of that's god behind us mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. in the enemy look you you may not in yourself have what you think you need but when you stand up in the name of the lord mm-hmm. of hosts david the young boy not the warrior didn't even fit into the armor had mm-hmm. no armor mm-hmm. was there with a slingshot against a warrior stood up what goliath you know what happened was the hosts of heaven the lord god almighty stood behind him and that's what you have standing behind you that that image that picture that you may be like that little bear cub yeah but but you have a a a roaring lion that is behind you that man nobody wants to mess with (laughs) but you got to trust that yep and you've got to rest in that 
and, and know that the Lord will, the battle belongs to the Lord, but the Lord is looking for warriors exactly right. who will enter into that battle with him. Yep. And when you put your hand to work, David said, Lord, teach my hands to war to battle. Mm-hmm. We got to ask God to help us teach our hands to war. You know, that needs to be one of our prayers. Teach our hands how to, to combat the enemy. That's Give exactly. us that strategy. And um, as we begin to pursue the enemy, uh, we're going to begin to overtake and gain back territory. And look, one thing about David is he only used one stone, but he got five. Yeah. And it was a prophetic yeah. thing because yeah. uh, those other four stones it represented Goliath's four brothers. That's exactly right. He had four brothers. You know, most of the time, you know, we've never been taught that. But yeah. when you study scripture, you see that uh, he had four brothers. That's exactly right. And so David wasn't just getting one for Goliath. <laughs> he was <laughs> utterly going to destroy all well, of them out of the exactly land, right. just like Joshua did. Yep. And you got to realize, man, that God is with you and that behind this giant, there's going to be another one. one. And another but one. God takes you from glory to glory. Faith one to faith. victory to victory. Yep. Yep. And so... And I challenge you, uh, ask for faith, Mm -hmm. ask for an increase, get Mm -hmm. into God's word and listen to it. Allow your faith to grow. Faith comes by measures. So you get more as you seek more. Exactly right. And as you apply more and as you exercise more, it gets, it's like a muscle. Yep. And if you don't work out, you're not going to be in shape. But if you continue to work out, man, you're going to continue to get stronger. And it's that muscle of faith. As you begin to exercise it, it gets stronger. Exactly it gets right. easier. You're not as sore as you used to nope. be. All of a sudden, man. You got strength. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you see the growth. Yeah. You see results from working out. You know what I mean? Getting slim or getting bigger, however you want to do. You see results from it, from pushing on that. Uh, pushing that iron, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's how you have to look at faith. The more you get into the Word of God and you build your faith, the begin, you're going to begin to see results, huge results, uh, faith results in your life that's going to give you the ability to do what you couldn't think about. You, you Things that you would say, well, that's impossible. Now it's possible all of a sudden because why? Your faith is grown to a place. And that's what it has to be. Yeah, well, look, you're not watching, you're not listening today by accident. Uh, God wants you to confront your giant. If somebody listening to me right now, you've been putting it off, but God wants you to confront that giant, knowing that he's with you, that you're not alone, that you don't need to retreat, you don't need to turn around, you don't need to go the other way. God wants you to go right into that battle knowing that he is with you. Mm -hmm. So take the time, get alone with God, gear yourself up, get into God's word and allow his word to just give you strength so that you can charge into battle and know that, you are victorious. You're not fighting for victory. You're standing on victory. You're defending it. You're fighting from a position of victory. And ask the Holy Spirit to shift your perspective, to begin to see like He sees. And we're going to pray right now that God would give you that, that boldness, that confidence in Him, that He would increase your level of faith. Uh, faith is also a gift of the Spirit. And, um, and I'm going to pray that God would increase that in your life so that you could be able to confront these giants. It's time that we face these things because we are living in a very serious time. Uh, I believe we are living in, you know, uh, the days <laughs> that Jesus is going to come back in sometime soon. Uh, maybe not in our lifetime, but I believe that we're going to be the generation that sees the Son of Glory returning again. And so I just want to pray for you watching me today and just encourage you that um, this isn't an accident. That giant you've been facing, God wants you to know He's with you, and He's going to give you the strength. But He's going to need you to step out in faith, to stand in front of that giant and look him in the eyes. Don't hang your head. Don't look down low, but look him in the eyes and declare, in the name of Jesus, Take back what belongs to you. So let's pray right now. Father, we just uh, we come before you. We give you thanks. We praise you. We, we just exalt you, Lord, because you are God Almighty. Almighty God. We just rest in that fact. There is none greater. There is none more powerful. Nobody higher. Nobody stronger. Nobody is more faithful. No one is good, as true, as righteous as you. And so, Lord, we rest in that today, that you are the ultimate warrior. You are the king victorious. You are resurrected and alive, that you overcame the power and chains of death, that nothing is impossible, Lord, for those who will believe in you. So, Lord, today we say, I believe. 
I believe in you. I believe in your word. And I believe in your people, Lord, who you created in your image. And I bring before you those who are listening, those who are watching right now, who are facing giants. And God, I speak to their faith and I say increase right now. We speak strength to you, encouragement that the spirit of joy would overtake you, that the joy of the Lord would be your strength today in Jesus' mighty name. God, I just pray that your anointing would cover them, that they would shift their perspective to begin to see like you see the mighty man and woman of valor that you created, the mighty warriors that they really are, that despite the times they've tried and failed, despite the, the setbacks that they've had in their lives, God, that they would begin to see the greatness that you have inside them, to see what you see you see a son and daughter who is more than capable to defeat any obstacle, any giant, any devil that stands in their way. So, Father God, we just thank you today, and I pray that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, that your anointing right now would just cover them and fill them, that there would be an overflow, God, of boldness and courage rise up inside of them. I pray for wisdom and discernment and strategy so that they would know how to fight what to do, when to do it, how to do it, God. Give them the instructions, I pray. Lead and guide them. Teach their hands to war, I pray, Lord. Guide and direct them. Empower the word in their mouth. In Jesus' name we ask, we thank you, and we praise you. Amen. 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 Well, man, the Lord is good. The Lord is with you. And it's time to go take down some giants. So get the sword out. Get the word of the living God. Gear up in the armor of the Holy Ghost. The weapons of your warfare. Read about it in Ephesians chapter 6. Gird yourself up. Put on the gear and charge into battle knowing that you're not alone. We'll see you next time right here on Going Deeper. God bless. If you would like to hear other Going Deeper topics from Ben Cerullo or would like to know more about The Awakening, visit us at myawakening.com.